would be a combined economic and financial crisis with, with, a, with a, an environmental crisis. It wasn't too hard to predict it, it wasn't rocket science. That it, all this science was pointing to that then. Um, financially and economically, the same thing. When they moved the wealth creating jobs out of the first world to the cheap, depressed labour economies, it was inevitable credit or debt would increase because for us as workers to consume, we would have to borrow. And that was, a, that was an end game for capitalism. So what have we got? We've got a capitalism that's totally dependent um, for, for it, it, its ongoing on, not only the usual war and so forth, but on the collective capital of workers, the big pension funds in America and the superannuation funds in Australia. We've got the military as the largest industry in the world, and according to the United Nations, by around about half, the illegal drug trade. That, that's a system in deep, deep crisis. So here, here we are, we're down in the Latrobe Valley, we're in the middle of the um, Hazelwood dispute, which was a five month long picket line and the miners union began a discussion along these lines. Hazelwood was saying, under threat of the dispute, that they would begin to close stages at Hazelwood. So the debate occurred on the executive and amongst some of the members, what would that mean? If they closed two stages, we would have seen a couple of hundred jobs go, out of 1,200 for the CFM new mining energy, not many. We extrapolated beyond that the introduction of gas, which is already happening as we speak. The employees are doing that now. They can produce a thousand megawatts, fifty jobs. Fifty jobs as distinct from a thousand megawatts would be around about 250, 300 jobs at the moment. So, so you're looking at a uh, these fairly large um, income-based jobs disappearing out of the communities. So similar to the privatisation, completely de devastate the Latrobe Valley and, and Gippsland. So then we, we the, the earth worker debate came alive again, all of a sudden, and right in the middle of the coal industry. Um, what jobs would we replace it with? Well, service sector jobs, of which we're around about close to I think 80 percent of service sector jobs in Australia now. Think about that. that that's building on sand. You know, because who's going to buy those services? when the real wealth creating jobs go. So, so we looked at the earthwork mm -hmm. strategy and, and we went back to uh, Bless Their Hearts to Everlast and Solar, who are basically two small capitalist companies who are nationalists. They're good solid people. Um, as, as Joe, uh, one of the managers, um, and these were fitter engineers off the shop floor originally, uh, said, said to, to a mob of secretaries that we took out there once, union secretaries, on, when he was asked, well, what's in this for you? Why, why, why are you doing this? And he said, well, I turn the TV on every night. I see our jobs disappearing overseas. No one can do anything about it. Notice the words. No one can do anything about it except you blocks. And we, we all were men in the room. No one. And that's interesting. That's really interesting. So um, they've been incredibly patient with us. And if it wasn't for the fact that they were there, because those companies will come in and help us fit out the, the first factory and train our workforce in return for royalty, because they are capitalists. Um, and the idea is that we will then produce to a major, um, for want of a better term, market. And that is our fellow workers, each other across the union movement, using the enterprise bargaining agreement as the means by which people can collectively purchase. The problem with the Buy Australia campaign was it always came down to an individual choice. Somebody goes into a shop, and if they can find anything that's made here, they then got a choice. And if they're a miner or a construction worker or a well-paid teacher or something like that, then they, can, they might be able to make that choice. If they're a single <coughs> parent with three kids, they're going to choose the cheaper one. They have to. So it always came down to an individual choice. What we want to do is we want to say that, that the process for purchase needs to be collective. Like anything else we do, we need to deal with this in a planned, rational way. So if we're going to purchase, we say that part of the compensation for the worker's wage would be a solar hot water unit on that worker's roof, or their parents' or their children's roof. Okay, so the, that gives us the capacity for, for bulk purchase. We can currently produce um, our uh, solar water unit, which, which has got a, a real 10 year warranty. It's all stainless steel and it's high water cheap without getting into the technicalities. But Eureka's future one is a better, 
piece of goods because workers created it. They stripped, uh, stripped down these fitter engineers off the shop floor, stripped down the world's best salt hot wood in it, and realised they could make a better one, and they did, they have. So that'll be what we produce. The ones coming in from overseas are generally on a, a, a glass-lined um, tank. Ours is all stainless steel, for instance. So ours actually has a 10-year warranty. So we're looking at introducing jobs in green industries that then workers can purchase through the enterprise bargaining agreements collectively. What we want to do is take that solar hot water unit plant, Eureka's Future, and put that in every state of Australia. The first place we want to do, if we can, within 12 months of setting up in the Latrobe Valley, is the Hunter. Yeah? And then we want to look at Collie and those places, where we start building the practical alternative, this just transition that everyone's talking about, but nobody seems to know how what to do, to do it. We want to, we want to stamp that template out. We, we then, because our our plants will belong to an association, the Earth Worker Social Enterprise Association. Hence the badges, you see. I knew, I knew they were boomerang back. Um, the idea is that every plant we set up will belong to that association, and the role of that association is to act as the social sector, or one social sector industry lobby. Because what we're engaging here is the setting up of a social sector, as I said. Where, where workers and the community actually own and control a sector of the Australian economy, a democratic sector that is not for profit, where the surplus created is put back into the collective good. And, and, and I guess it's working off, off, a, off, a, off a very basic Marxist assumption that we as the working class could not be any more ready to run this society than we are now. Workers run rail, right? workers run hospitals, uh, workers operate most of the, the, the major infrastructure across the economic culture. So what we're talking about here is we go that step further where working class communities own and control as well. The second phase of it is the setting up of, through the Earth Worker Social Enterprise Association, the Earth Worker Social Enterprise Finance Arm. Similar to Mondragon in the sense that the role for the finance arm is to establish more factories. To, 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 so we're not in the problem we're in now, where we have trouble finding the, the funds to get the ball rolling. Because what we want to get into is the production of the energy producing woods. So the large solar thermal, we want to put hundreds of acres in, up around Mildura and Echuca, and in towards the centre. Hundreds and hundreds of acres of the manufactured solar thermal woods that we create. Uh, wind, small, medium, and large. Biomass for the council tips, etc. All of the energy producing goods. The problem with renewables is they cost. So it's difficult for people to purchase, and that affects the rapidity of the uptake of the goods. In other words, if we want to draw carbon down out of the atmosphere, how do we pump out those thousands of solar thermal plates and get it in the ground quickly? And I'm talking in the next five to eight years. How do we do that? <coughs> well, we can go on shaking our fist in the air at capitalists and saying, we demand you do it, when they're actually causing the problem. And, and, and financially, they're in a deep crisis. Or we can step up to the plate. So what we're suggesting is we do the latter. How do we get over the fact that these things cost and it's difficult to get them in? And to get them in in the numbers we need in order to draw carbon down out of the atmosphere. Well, the solution we've come up with is this, that the finance arm not only finances and funds the setting up of the factory, but then purchases the goods from the factory, so we guarantee the market. In turn, we do leasing arrangements on equitable terms. So for instance, up around Wiltura and Achuca and in towards the centre, any of the shire councils who provide us land to put those solar thermal plates on, they basically get their power for free. Because the workers who will now be the generator, think about that, we will be the generator, will make the surplus from the power we pump into the grid, into the national electricity market. Okay. And the, that surplus in turn, <coughs> we pump back into the creation of more 